This is MAP4C. No, it's not. MCT4C. Day 12. Uh, the three-minute review uh, goal is actually review from a while ago, and it's recall transformation of quadratic functions. Transformations, remember, means when we have some sort of graph that we move it left or right or up or down or stretch it or squish it, squish it or flip, that sort of thing. And so um, we've got a bunch of parabolas. You know, there's the basic parabola, and these ones have been moved, adjusted by shoving a 3 into the equation there, and we have to match up which is which. Um, this first one, the plus 3, it's not in with the x, so it's affecting y values. And when it's affecting y values, it affects it changes it in exactly the way that you expect. So plus 3, you'd think, in the direction of y, it's going to go up 3, and that's correct. This one is inside the brackets, affecting x values. And when it's affecting x values, it's always a little bit strange. It's a little bit strange because um, it's opposite that you'd think. you think minus 3 in the direction of x should go left 3. But it doesn't. It's opposite in the direction of x. Or it's right 3. There we go, like that. Uh, the next one, notice that this 3 isn't in with the x. Otherwise, there'd be brackets around there. It would look like this, wouldn't it? We never saw one like that back in grade uh, 10 or 11. Um, we will this, this uh, chapter with trig functions. But this is affecting y values. And when it's affecting y values, it's exactly what it should be. Multiplying by 3 should make it bigger, you think, and it does. And that's a stretch. And I'm going to add the extra little information that this is a vertical stretch. It's in the direction of y. It's a vertical stretch. So a stretch vertically by a factor of 3. Um, this one, well, it's not in with the x, so it's affecting y values. This one's down 3. Um, this one is in the brackets with the x, affecting x values, so it's going to move it left or right, and it's opposite that you'd think. And then finally, this one has to match up with that one just because there's none left. But this makes sense as well. When I'm multiplying by a fraction, it should make it uh, smaller, should make it squished, and that's what it is. And again, that squish is vertical, a vertical squish. Okay, on with today's lesson. Um, the lesson 2.2, expectations, we got a couple of them. And the idea is, uh, yesterday we did the basic graphs. Or last class, we did the basic graphs. And now we're putting some numbers in there and figuring out how that affects the graphs and how it affects key properties. Um, so this one asks us to graph three, three functions. on the same axes, these ones here. Notice that we've set it up kind of our our standard way is every three squares or every three ticks we put an important point, 90 every three ticks an important point, every three ticks an important point, that sort of thing. And in fact that's how we start with with uh, f at x equals sine x, right? We know sine starts at zero and every three ticks there's an important point going from zero to one to 0 to negative 1. Every 3 squares I get an important point. And that's good enough. And remember we want a nice smooth curve. No teeth here. And I'm going to label that. We know it goes on forever in both directions. That's the idea of the rotation angle. right? It can keep going. And so that's this is f of x. I'm going to change my color uh, for one of the other ones. So now, what does the minus 30 do? What does that do there? Well, it's in with the x, isn't it? It's not, it's not on the outside. So it's on the inside, affecting x values. It's opposite that you'd think. It's right 30. Now notice, that sounds like a lot, because up here, you know, if we took our, uh, back here in the 3-minute review, if we had this was right 30 that would be 30 ticks to the to the to the right but this one well each ticks only worth 30 so this is actually right 30 degrees but 
that's only right one tick. And so each of my important points, I'm just going to move them right one tick. 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 And then smooth curve. Oops. You're doing a better job than me of this, probably. Oh, that's a mess. Should I try again? Yes, I shall. That's marginally better. A little teeth action there. That's, you know, oh well. Sine of x minus 30. Now, notice there's a little gap over here. And we want to graph it from 0 to 360 usually. So let's go backwards. Where's the next important point going to be from here? Well, if I go backwards, 1 to 0 to negative 1, and 3 ticks away, right? 3 ticks away. Okay. Uh, the last one I'm going to do in green is plus 60. So plus 60, you think it would be moving it right, but since it's affecting x, it's opposite. This is left 60 degrees. Well, how much is that? If each tick is worth 30, this is two ticks, right? Two ticks left. So I'm going to start with the original purple one here, and I'm going to move left two ticks. Now notice, I could go along and move each of my important points left two ticks, or I could just follow the pattern. I know if that's my starting spot, my important points are going to come every three ticks. Every 90 degrees, I get an important point, and it goes between the, the uh, important, po important values from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 and so on. So... Every three points, important point. Every three ticks, important point. Every three ticks, important point. Every one, two, three ticks, important point. And notice every three ticks, important point. Then I don't get these little gaps if I just keep following that pattern, right? Um, and notice if I look at this green one, I look at this green one, it is the purple one moved left two ticks, isn't it? Two ticks, two ticks, two ticks, each of those points. And I think at least finding the starting point, point and repeating the pattern is faster and easier. That's kind of up to you, though. Okay, one thing I want to mention before we go on to the next one is this idea of the properties. What, what actually has, has happened for the properties? Well, if I think of things like F, G, and H, I want to think of the domain, for instance. Well, what's the domain of the original graph? Well, it's going to keep going on forever. There's going to be shadow on the entire x-axis. I could put anything into my calculator and take the sign of it. And that's true for the green and blue ones, too. So this is x is a member of the reals, and that's the same here and here. Okay, well, what about the range? Well, for all of them, again, it starts, it gets as low as minus 1 and as high as positive 1. But that was the same as the original, right? The range here was negative 1 to 1. And I'm just going to put an arrow there to show that it's the same. Period. What's the period? Well... For the purple one, it starts repeating every 360 degrees. And important points were, and I'm going to put there, important points every 90, IP every 90, important points. And that's the same for these ones, right? Even though it goes from here to here, if you were to count that up, that's still 360 for that green one when it starts repeating itself. You know, if I go from 0 to 360, it's at the same spot. It's The period hasn't changed. How would the period have to change? Well, we'd have to either stretch the wave out or squish the wave, and that's when the period would change. But that's not for a couple of days still. What about the amplitude? Well, the amplitude, remember, is the height of half a bump here. So on the purple one, the amplitude is right there. 
is one. Well, on the blue one, what it, it's still one, right? It's it hasn't changed. So moving this graph left or right, what has it changed as far as the properties of trig functions? Nothing. 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 This is actually called a phase shift. Next is a cosine, and, and we see here these graphs uh, have been moved up and down, right? It's not in with the x, it's affecting the output value, so it's been moved up and down. So, well, let's, what is this silly thing that's keeping going? Uh, hopefully, uh, that'll just go away now. All right. So the basic graph, remember cosine state. Notice that I didn't put any values on, on the y-axis this time because I'm moving it up and down a little bit. So if I put that as 1, I'm going to go off the, off the graph. So I'm going to change my scale a little bit. I'm going to make that 1, that 2, and that 3. And of course, this you'll have to adjust. For the most part, we're going to stick with this scale along the the x-axis. We'll see. Sometimes it'll change, but but for, for today and tomorrow, it'll be just this one. Cosine starts at one, and then every three ticks, important point, going from one to zero to negative one to zero to one, and so on. Right, and that's the first graph, which is cos x. Changing colors. What does this do? Well, it affects y values, like we said. And when we affect y values, it does exactly what you think. This is just going to move it up one. Up one. Up one. Up one. Up one. This is y equals cos x plus 1. Keep going, keep going. Um, down 2. Now I'm going to show you the same thing as the, the first one. Is Once we get the starting spot, we can kind of repeat the pattern. So if I take this starting spot, this is moved down, down 2. Down to mm -mm, right there is the starting spot, and then it follows the pattern every three ticks. Important point. Now, what's what's weird is when we do the original, it's kind of nice to have that x-axis to to go by, and then we know that it goes above and below that axis the equal amount. So I, when I do it this way, I like to put in the axis there. Maybe I should have used a ruler, but oh well. Every three ticks, important point. 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 Now I saw that I'm supposed to be checking my work with the graphing calculator. Not very necessary here, but um, I will do that. And I will talk about the, um, the right now, before I get to the graphing calculator, I'm going to talk about the properties again. So so what's changed here? I'm just going to write down the stuff that's changed. The domain for all of these graphs, still I'm going to have shadow all over the x-axis. The domain for all of them is all real numbers. And in fact, that's going to be true for the most part for all. What has changed? Well, the, the output has changed because it's went up and down. So the range for f and for g and for h has changed, right? For f, the original one is exactly what we knew, we're used to now. It's between, the purple one is between negative 1 and positive 1. And for g, if I look at the, g is the blue one, right? It gets as far down as 0 and as far up as 2. So if I write that, and notice here what's happened. These values have just went up by 1, right? Well, that makes sense. The outputs have been moved out up one, so that means the range gets pushed up up by one. Similarly, if I just look at the numbers, 
for H, the range should be down to down to and is that what the case is? Negative 1 and negative 3? Yep, nice. Notice that the period and the amplitude haven't changed. Okay, I'm going to finish this, this uh, note off in part 2 in just a second.